Hey everyone, welcome to this session. Really excited to be speaking with all of you. As you probably saw, topic for today is, is slightly different in that sense and something which I feel is probably really important for all of us, whether you are an aspiring PM or an existing PM or really experienced PM and is probably a topic we all have thought about at some point. So today we'll talk about how do we build product thinking as a habit uh, in, a, in a broader context to really either enter the domain or become a great PM. So just to get started, uh, probably the best way to start is let's get to know each other better. I'll get started as well, but in the meanwhile, I'll recommend all of you to start sharing about you in the comment section, share about your current role, share about how much experience you have, why you want to become a PM or why you actually decided to become a PM. And what are the three area of opportunities or growth for you specifically, what you are really working on uh, or what you think are, are the things you want to focus on in coming couple of years, especially. So just to get started, my name is Saurabh. Uh, I am an engineer and I have worked at startups, had my startup and worked as a product manager for nearly last 10 years. Currently, I work at PayPal as a lead product manager and have worked at PTM, Careers360 and other startups in past. Interesting thing about me is being an engineer, of course, I focus a lot on a lot of management related uh, things, but product management is way broader than to narrow it into one or two domains. And some of the areas which I really felt are super important for me and they helped me were around public policy and data privacy and law. And those are the things I also studied in last few years. So uh, would love to know more what domains you really come from, especially if you're from non-engineering background, um, uh, do, do share about uh, that as well as you, as you share about you in the chat. Now, as we get started, this covers some of the questions aspiring PMs or experienced PMs may be hearing from aspiring PMs. It can range from how do I really crack a PM interview to do I really need an MBA to be a product manager to do I need to be an engineer to be a product manager? Or it can be, is there a course I can just do to become a PM? Or it can be what books I should read as a PM. Now, all those are questions that are very relevant, though they tackle one part of the problem statement. And in order to complete that puzzle, what really is needed is to do some of these or many of these, but more importantly, identify ways to not solve for that one task but really solve for the real problem statement that how do you become a PM or how do you become a great PM? And that is not something which would happen overnight. So as we talk about really what product thinking would mean or what uh, having it as a habit would mean, whether it's a product uh, management habit or it's something else, it plays a crucial role and we'll touch base more on that. So as we get started, we'll talk about why building habits really matter. We'll then talk about what product thinking really means. And as you're thinking about your career, what are the right habits you should start building, which would actually help you become a great PM. And that would need persistent uh, approach to do it over a period of time. And we'll touch base on it. Like some, what are the, some of the simple things we all can do in that process? What we'll also do is we'll take a quick example as we do, because the best way to really learn is to implement something. So as I go through some of the, some of the details, I would share potential company examples or domains you can pick and actually try to apply those principles. So if you don't have a pen and paper, feel free to grab one and uh, try to keep it more engaging uh, as you can. And as you complete the exercise after the session, feel free to share your uh, one pager, what you would be working on in the chat so that, you know, we can have kind of community learning for all of us. Okay, so let's get started. Why habits really matter and how they really help save a lot of effort in long run. You, have, you would have heard about habits in a lot of different contexts. And I think we all have seen as individuals the role they can play in both personal and professional life. So just to get started from product management perspective, PM as a role is evolving. And if you look at, PM as a role 10 years or 15 years back versus now, it is way more structured and 
that has given us the opportunity to really identify some of those things. Though, even with all the structure coming in, PM role is not something which would remain same across industries or across size of companies or seniority level. It changes considerably. And as you really start thinking on what habits would be important for you from product thinking perspective, it is really important to identify where in the chart you really fit that are you a part of a young startup where you are playing not just a PM role, but maybe playing role of a product marketer as well, or playing the role of business development as well? Or are you at a series B, series C funded company, which has more structure, but is still at a stage where there is still a lot of chaos, which you are trying to navigate and you are juggling across mm -hmm. multiple things versus you are a PM, which is focused onto platforms or focused onto market, or you are a specialist PM into some specific segment. So identifying that becomes easy for you to really define your learning plan. And I would say the learning plan would be the key to really achieve that, those goals. So as you think about it, identify where you really stand in terms of these three parameters on industry seniority and size of the company you work at and try to think towards how you create a learning plan. Now, just like any habit, it is compounding over a period of time. It's not something which you can do for one day or one week and you can magically expect that to give you a return. And some of you may have read Atomic Habits, if not highly recommended you to read. It, it's not specific to product thinking habits, but it is about habits in general. Though I would say the core principles would remain pretty similar irrespective of the domain you want to apply in. Now, I would highlight here as well that we talked about the stage of your PM journey you are in. And the skills that really got you a PM job or the skills that made you from an associate to a product manager to a senior product manager would not be the same skills that would make you go ahead in the career. And that's why it is really essential to be able to identify the skills you need for your next role and really work towards that. And that's where building great habits actually help you build strong product tense over time. So when, when we think about product sense and someone being able to make a decision, that is a journey we basically need to go through in order to build that sense where we know how to make a decision, either through a framework, either through a process, uh, and, and really leveraging some of those skills to be able to better at that. And another thing I'll also highlight as we really jump into that is many of you may be in process of interviewing, maybe in process of starting your career, I'll really highlight for you to take a step back and look at the habits you would want to build to have a strong product sense, because you do not want to solve, like I said at the beginning, for one problem statement, which can be cracking an interview. That is a great skill to have, though it is something you may be able to fake. You do not want to be into those shoes where you got the job, but you realize that it was not the job you really wanted or you're not fit to do that job. And that's where the role comes that you need to prep for the next job you want ahead of time and not narrow it down to, I want to go to company ABC and this is their interview process. I know it well enough and I know enough to really crack the interview. So I think that's where the difference comes that keep your mindset broad about building those skills that they are sufficient enough for you to be able to sell yourself in an interview and not just focus only on really being great at doing interviews. This is a simple example as many of you would have seen in a couple of books or blog posts, how slightly incremental effort to build a habit or being better every day really compounds over a period of time, like we discussed a couple of minutes back. So as, as you look at your learning plan, also keep an eye of not just short-term goals, but actually one year down the line, two years down the line, when you practice something, what return it can bring for you. Now, as we talked about what product or what habits really would make a difference to you, let's actually be specific and get into what product thinking or product sense really means. Product sense is simple. It is the skill for a PM to build deep understanding of the customer and keeping customer at center of everything the PM is really deciding to do and really knowing what would make a product successful 
both for business as well as customers and a product that customers will love and that's why it has multiple facets it's not a one binary decision you would be able to make and hence this skill is something we all build over a period of time now as we discuss about product sense let's talk a bit more on what it really means and how do we really look at product sense like is it is it something we are able to build based on what we have studied what we have worked on and there may be various works you have done so if let's say you are a data scientist or you are a engineer or you are a marketer who has worked you may be able to leverage a lot of your skills from your past experience so as we discuss some of these um, quick snippets try to leverage your thinking around your current expertise as well now one of the first thing is i think which is easier said than done and you would have heard hundreds of times is about focusing on the customers and not features though it is very hard to implement depending on the company you are working at or a level you are working at it may become very easy for you to get swamped down by number of features you are shipping and at some scenarios you may even be measured by number of features you have really shipped to your product though what becomes important is even though you are working towards those being able to objective to know what features to build and who and why you are really building those so take a lot of time in identifying the problem you are solving and a lot of times you may not be solving a problem you may be solving an inefficiency right when we build a lot of products we are not eradicating that problem as a whole we are finding ways for customers to do those things more efficiently or uh you know in in a better structure or maybe in a cost effective way or there may be so many other facets to it and this is a simple thing you can actually apply not just to your pm job but irrespective to the job you are doing to your daily life as well in general so start with the problem or uh the current challenge you are solving for and who you are solving for moving to what your vision and strategy is towards it and being able to define goals of what you want to achieve and then you would be able to trickle down to what features like what exactly you would be shipping the moment you start from the bottom the challenge which happens is you may build a feature but you may not even find out what problem or what inefficiency you were solving for and you'll try to retrofit so that would become a, a counter intuitive way to really solve and it's really easy to start practicing in your daily life decisions also whether it's about let's say buying a car to a buying a house and you would realize that it's it's a pretty easy way to apply a framework like this not just to a pm job the next thing is what product success would mean now like i said you would go to features once you have defined the goals once you have defined what business needs what your customer needs and then you know what is getting built and in the process you would define what is the outcome you are trying to drive out of that feature so as you focus on these steps one thing to keep in mind is your goal is to work towards outcomes and not output the moment you work to output you get into the same process of building features and there is no scenario where shipping 100 features would be a better idea when you could have probably done that job into a much more efficient manner and the more features you ship does not mean your customers would end up using it it may cause clutter it may cause confusion and they may be really bad quality products as well in general so have a very clear product success uh, criteria is defined whether it is on uh, customer needs or business needs now six sense is something which i would directly correlate with your ability to make decisions as well as your past experiences in some senses and that's why i said a lot of good decisions would be made only when you have made bad decisions now your job is not to not make bad decisions at all your job is also to make sure you are able to make some really good decisions and be okay with some bad decisions and really being able to leverage the learnings from those failures so i need to identify ways of prioritization in general like what are the highest roi opportunities and then being able to execute on them and if they fail you are able to learn from them and iterate faster i think that is where your sixth sense muscle would be developed uh, and you would be able to learn that over a period of time that 
irrespective of how senior you would become or how many years of experience you have you would still make some bad choices and that is okay your only job is to make sure you are able to make good choices in a higher percentage i'll jump on to this construct which i personally love about being a first order thinker or a second order thinker and this kind of summarizes all we are talking about in that sense a lot of times when you look at your decisions whether at your work or in your personal life you'll realize a lot of decisions are first order thinking those are the decisions where your decisions were driven by your past experiences or beliefs or you did not go deeper into a lot of those and kind of on the surface level the information you had or which was most likely your first or second thought of how you should solve for it you were moving forward with that decision the difference in second or the thinking is when you are able to look beyond the current assumptions or beliefs you have you are able to really dive deeper into solving for those complex problems in in i would say a non traditional way because it would not be generally your first or second thought what came to your mind it may be as well though it would need much more logical interpretation rather than uh, more emotional or you know the first reaction you really had on top of those and you would see that a lot of decisions do not need to be taken immediately and that's where you need to be able to synthesize information and deliberately make an effort to have you know logical decision making as a habit and that is what truly differentiates your ability to have that sixth sense the more you are able to practice second order thinking for yourself the better you would become at really making the sixth sense decisions in that sense now let's talk about how do we build product sense right like we all are going through this journey irrespective uh, of places we work at and there are always some areas which we all need to work towards so there are some foundations which we all need to do they may change the amount of time you invest on them based on your domain expertise or based on your level of experience though you still need to keep flexing that muscle regularly to really keep that skill uh, you know into a solid shape now like i said you are not born with product sense you really build it over a period of time some people may be better than others just because of how they are able to make decisions and many of them may be second order thinkers by personality but the good point is with practice and habits it it is pretty foundational for us to build either ourselves or our companies how they are structured that would help us to uh, build that strong product sense so as we jump into couple of examples let's actually pick one of the examples whatever you like if you know about the first four industries i would recommend you to take one of the examples from that either take something like self driving car operating system take a space travel company or take reverse aging or take neuralink and uh, if you're not familiar with any of those domains take any company you feel inspired by uh or you use regularly or you feel has a huge potential uh whether it's into payments or mobility or marketplaces or you know uh, electric cars or uh, genome mapping or data privacy take one of the examples and as we go through some of the details after this slide try to implement that what it would mean if you were at that company for you to think towards building products over there and again think about the quality of your thoughts do not get stuck around you need to have more number of points try to find the best thought that comes into your mind not that you need to list down too many things over there so as we get started let's start with the customer first that empathy plays a key role and again it is another thing which is easier said than done you cannot be a pm who is empathetic to customers but not empathetic in your real life and the easiest way to start practicing that is people around you friends family or anyone else try to pay attention to their word and emotions you see and feel and that is what would help you really understand the customer well from their lens what they are saying versus what they are doing and being able to distill that customer information so what you see on the left it's not a format feel free to write in any form but think about the example you chose and who your customers are what do they think and feel what are their pain points right now if you build something what gain they are really having and is it something that the customer would likely need and how would you distill that information so 
keep that as your first principle in that sense that try to build habit of practicing empathy starting from your broader life and then you would see the returns in your pm life as well another thing is you cannot really read reports or expect to get to know the customer if you are too occupied or if you do not prioritize going out and meeting your customers they would not come to you they would not come to you to tell that hey i want this feature you would have to go again understand their pains understand what they are thinking what they are feeling what emotions uh, they are having and how can you really build a solution around it solve their inefficiencies and how do you move forward so really being able to categorize that you have to invest let's say 25% of your time in meeting your customers or talking to your customers and defining what customer segments your product is going to operate on or what is priority for you and then building hypothesis on top of that which you can basically test and learn after that so whatever example you choose try to apply who your customers are and what hypothesis you may have um, as of now with whatever data you have though in your personal life as well you would be easily able to apply some of those principles just to be curious enough when you meet a customer it can be your conversations with a with a small seller it can be at a mom and pop store it can be in your uber or lyft and that would give you an opportunity to build your muscle just to get to know customers and their emotions and uh, being having a habit to meet them regularly all that is great but along with knowing your customer you really need to have strong understanding of your market in terms of how companies built their business what made them succeed or fail what opinions market has right now and what are the micro or macro factors that are really going to in impact some of the things because see sometimes when you're building products you may be too early to the market you may be too uh, late to the market and having this visibility to understand these micro and macro factors will actually give you ability to know if you understand your playground really well and that would include really knowing the pricing strategies you really understanding your competitors well and actually using their products a lot of times uh being able to leverage qual quantitative and qualitative studies and really using them to drive your product development or product strategy in that sense so again for your example try to see who are really the competitors let's say if you choose um self driving os who are the current players in the market and uh, what are their strengths right now which state of product development they are in which markets are they able to operate in what is the legal purview around that area is there a business model around that are they able to charge their customers do they have customers uh, who would be willing to pay and those are the kind of factors which would help you frame your thoughts in a better way and really approach this problem into a structured manner as we get ahead into that problem solving does not happen when suddenly you have a problem statement to solve at your workplace it is again a muscle which you need to build over a period of time and that can happen into a lot of different scenarios outside your pm job one of the good examples to do is especially for you to think like a pm is to do a lot of product market fit tear down so take any example from the list we had or any other company you like and really try to do those tear downs on a regular basis and you can pick a industry let's say my top favorite industries are edtech payments or fintech or healthcare and if i want to build my strong understanding around those you can pick one uh, startup every week for example and you invest few hours every week to really get to know that space uh, what that company is doing who their competitors are who their customers are are the business positive right now or not and that would actually help you just realize that in one year you would be able to do 50 to 60 companies that would mean you would have touched considerable amount of industry not just for that domain but uh, you know touching multiple geographies and how customers into different geographies really think about those as a problems so you'll be able to really build up understanding on solving those problems at a much broader lens again an area where it's really important to build muscle because you would want your decisions to be objective and in order for you to be objective you need to have an analytical sense of how you are able to understand data and behavioral patterns 
to really be able to grow your product. And that can include whether you define your KPIs or OKRs, you define what your success criteria are when you launch something or you are testing something, you know how you are going to measure and how you are going to synthesize that information to really decide if there is something that you need to change. So simple ways of looking at, I would say anything analytical is again, use your example and see what would be your customer and business outcomes of the example you chose and are they objective enough? Like if it is subjective that I want to grow my user base, then it is not a measurable, uh, measurable parameter at all. You would need to be specific that, Hey, my market size is X. The country I'm operating into gives me a space of X by two. And I expect 15% user conversion, for example, let's say in my first 12 months. And that is an objective number. Now, how you reach that number is of course, through a process you would define for yourself. But what is really important is to bring that objectivity into your outcomes and being able to measure and learn from those. And last but not the least in that sense, we spoke about it a bit on prioritization. And one of the hard parts of the job in that sense, I would say is you need to know what to say no to. And in some scenarios, your answer can be a default no to start with, and then really thinking backwards of what you need to prioritize. And you probably would have seen a lot of decision making happening, depending on the company you are at, where you're evaluating uh, hundreds of things, uh, where your roadmap may be changing every quarter or every uh, six months. But the benefit of being great at decision making is also that your decisions need to be high quality. It's not about you making 10 decisions, 20 decisions, 1000 decisions a day. It is really about the quality of those decisions and the quality of those decisions would improve with all the data, all the product sense you would be able to build and bringing both objectivity as well as empathy towards the problem statement you are solving towards. So really identify ways for the example you took or anything else and find a way why you would say no to this. And this is not the most important thing for the user. The moment you are able to really prioritize that you would become much more efficient into identifying what is to be done and really focus on that to, to really test and learn after that. And it may not be the best decision. Still, you may still have to go back and relook at prioritization because the market may have changed. You may have had the wrong data and so many other factors but it is a great exercise to make sure whatever you are picking is not just because hypothetically, let's say your manager told you so, but you are able to question. And I don't think any manager or any CEO or any product head would really question till the time your decisioning is really objective. So have the muscle to think about why that decision is right and wrong. And is it the right thing to really invest time onto? So let's wrap up. We are nearly out of time, but four takeaways I would uh, tell you to think towards as you think about building your product sense is about really being empathetic and a true customer champion, because that is where your true advocacy would lie. Second is invest a lot of time to do product tear downs to have market knowledge, competitor strategy and pricing. This would help you build the muscle to be able to predict what is the next product that company is going to launch. Third is on product solve, problem solving, find ways to solve problems in your daily life. And that would help you build the muscle to solve problems as a PM. And last but not the least is how do you prioritize? How do you launch and iterate? That decision has to be objective, though you need to have enough risk taking ability to fail and then be able to learn from that and launch again. As we close, I'll give you four book recommendations, which I personally have learned a lot from. And I think as you think about your product sense, they would tremendously help you, uh, whether it's about building long-term habits or learning from things around you, which you, you may be using every day, or how do you build customer centric products or how do you build purposeful products? So highly recommended four books. Uh, take time to read these. I'm pretty sure you would find value in it. If you have already uh, read those, uh, I share like what really was the key takeaway for you. 
And um, why would you recommend other people to also read that book? Thank you, everyone. Uh, great speaking with all of you. Definitely drop me a note on LinkedIn, Twitter, or on my email. And happy to connect, happy to answer any questions we are not able to answer today. And uh, we'll, we'll speak again soon. Thanks a lot.